What is up, friends? It is peak snowblower season here in Jersey. Peak repair season, peak sale season. So I'm busier than heck. I don't have time for long Dixonian introductions. Gotta get to the facts. If you guys like watching snowblower repair, you're gonna wanna subscribe to the channel. Maybe even go check out my last few videos. Eric and I had a pile of DOA snowblowers. All of them were free. Our job was to get them back on the road out there chucking snow. You may remember this one from last time. We got it running, but it wasn't running right. Uh, I finally have it running right now. The idle circuit needed to be cleaned out again. No big deal. Our problem for today, the previous owner, I think I, I touched on this last time. It used to have an electric chute. So the swivel would have been electric. I think it's a toggle switch. I don't know, some friggin' place. Yeah, this toggle switch would have been up top. And if you want it to go left, you like that. And if you want it to go right, unnecessary. That's, it's not necessary. This method, where you crank it by hand has worked since the very first snowblower. Anyway, previous owner, I guess the motor went out or who knows what the problem was, some kind of uh, voodoo uh, issue, phantom issue in the wiring. And he rigged up this thing, which works just fine, but it's gonna be a tough sell. So what I wanna see is, can I take, I have a couple spare shoots around. The one I think is gonna work is off an area. So we're gonna see if we can do that. Can you replace an MTD electric chute with a regular old cranky shoot and then this guy right here we got a snapper what is this about a 422 my favorite well <laughs> that's a hard thing to say but one of my favorite blowers of all time we're going to touch on this one if you ever see one of these little snappers for sale you pick it up i don't care how big of a snow blower you need these are probably the best made snow blowers that i've encountered outside of like your really expensive arians and uh Simplicity. Without further ado, I think we should start on the chute because once that chute's done, this one can go out the door. And uh, it just snowed here in Jersey last night. Not a lot, but it, anytime it snows, people go out there and buy it. It can snow an inch and people go out and buy a 30 inch snowblower. I don't really know why. It, it triggers the things and the thoughts. Let's find that other area and chute, bring it over here and start doing some measurements. Alrighty. Now, this DOA machine has been sitting out beside the house for a while. Total basket case, it's seized solid, I can't get the head off, it's missing parts, but has a very similar chute setup. And the clamshell is actually an MTD style clam, so I'm thinking this is an MTD blower that was rebadged uh, as a, a Craftsman. Leads me to believe I might be able to make that work. What do y'all think? There we go. <clears throat> Should be able to see uh, a bit more what we're up against now. All right, so that's what's sitting there. You essentially have this piece, this plastic piece is attached right to the tunnel and it's got a edge on it, this shoulder, which you sandwich in between this bottom piece the teeth and this top piece which is obviously attached to the uh, to the chute <clears throat> that's how it would have maneuvered it around the huge bummer about this little Arians one is oh man it fits perfect <clears throat> yeah it fits on there real perfect uh, I just don't really have a mechanism for spinning it and I don't really have a mechanism for attaching it so let's get this other craftsman off and see if it looks any better. Let me go ahead and cut this rope. I don't think anyone's gonna be using that anymore. I mean, it was a novel idea. It was a kind of a repair my dad would have hooked up. Certainly functional, but kind of a hard sell when you're gonna resell something. Holy Halliburton. Look at the tires on that thing. Put them on the dang Jeep. I mean, these are some normal snar blower tires. They're even a little large, but good gravy. Thing's gonna be chucking rocks like a dang old two-stroke dirt bike. All right, let's get this thing off. Oh, interesting. This top piece is really just, uh, okay. So the spinning mechanism and the chute are two separate things it looks like. Let's 
so let's see. There we go. Um, there we go, and there we go. Interesting, they use carriage bolts on everything, which usually I'd be annoyed by, but it means that uh, I don't need to put a wrench underneath all this stuff, so I'm on board. Alrighty friends, there's that. I just don't know. All right, I think the next step is gonna to be to take this plastic tunnel off. Cause I'm, I suspect I may even be able to slip something up from the bottom. Let's, uh, let's pull that off, please, just a couple bolts. Before you do anything like what I just did, sticking your hand down a snar blower, you make sure that the Spark plug is disconnected, the fuel's turned off. I mean, anything you can do to make sure that thing ain't gonna jump up and bite you. You know what, better yet, don't try it home, never mind. Don't ever do anything you see me do. Beautiful. Now, let's see. kind of finagling could we do? All right, friends, I think we have a plan. This is the plastic piece that goes on the uh, white outdoor, the MTD, the one we're trying to fix. I think I can take all this stuff, which goes from the Craftsman, and slip it up under here if I remove this. There's more to the plan, but for now, that's all you need to know. I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> Doug, even for you, that's a hack job, but I'm gonna throw it on the belt sander. The old one by 30 there, ow! Hot plastic is hot, go figure. I think the law of diminishing returns is gonna come in if we try to get any smoother. That's perfectly fine. I just wanted it to not look jagged and uh, not look too much like some jabroni in New Jersey modified this thing without a without a foolproof plan in place. Let's go back over to the machine and see how we're see how we're looking at it. So this is gonna go up and over and it's gonna sandwich this lip. It's also got the teeth on the bottom for moving. Then this piece goes from the top and you tie it all together with all them uh, carriage bolts I was complaining about a little bit ago. So, I think we should be able to get that. Oh, we're very close. I'm gonna clearance a little bit of this over on the machine there. Oh buddy, are we close, I tell you. Problem is, I think this is ABS plastic and it doesn't really, doesn't have a lot of give. It cracks. You get one chance. <clears throat> if I crack it, well, y'all know. It's no bueno. Alrighty, friends. Certainly, I think it's gonna fit now. The question is, did I remove so much material that it no longer functions? 
That's the concern, obviously, right? Oh, come on, man. You're so close. Okay, so far, so good. Ish, so good ish. Let's see about getting this guy in. There's a little tab there that lines up with a little tab over here. Well, friends, for better or worse, we now have a no rotating assembly for this snar blower. Let's go put it on and then we have to figure out how to do a handle. So the point of this video is if you have one of these MTD, yard machine, white outdoor, whatever they're calling it, they're all the same thing, and it had one of these electric chutes and it broke, you can very easily uh, fix it. Find a uh, DOA snow blower or something, you know. It's just a matter of uh, getting creative. I know you can do that. I got faith in you. You can be creative, right? Alrighty, friends, I'm actually liking my decision to go with this Craftsman as a donor more and more because this whole schnoozler setup is just held on by this one seven steens right there. And beautifully, it's all connected on its own bracket. It's awesome. So I'm thinking uh, I should be able to just drill a hole and mount this whole thing over there. How cool would that be? Right? As long as we can get it lined up properly. Oh, yeah. We're in tall cotton now. Friends, that look like nine sixteenths or five eighths. Uh, yeah, the hits keep coming because this is where it's attached up here and the uh, MTD white outdoor has the exact same style handlebars So I'm gonna be able to remove one of these screws. You get it all in all coming together. Just nice All right friends, we're gonna start here because this is where it was on the craftsman. We're gonna remove the top mount Oh my goodness, that's in there um, Top hardware from these handlebars. These are actually, I really like these handlebars because they collapse in on themselves for storing. Not all snowblowers have them like this. In fact, I think this might be an MTD, no, this is an Arians design. That's how Arians makes them. My goodness, that took forever. All right, let me find something to smacky smacky that. Just in case we end up needing it again. There we go. <clears throat> and now we should just have to take this. Of course it doesn't fit. <laughs> no big deal. Tell you what, bud, it's like she was made for it. That like that. All right, so I need this whole thing to come in like that. I may have to bend this some. Here is the bracket. <clears throat> Used to have another piece that came up like that, no big deal. If I can get this fitted right here, it, uh, it lines up perfectly to spin this thing, all right? So <clears throat> we're just gonna go ahead and drill some holes right here and attempt to reuse the stock um, hardware. Let's see, let's see, you know? Let's see, can we persuade it? There she blows, or she stops, nobody knows, no big deal. And beautifully, I can already see we are well clear of the impeller. That's what I like to see. What do you think, folks? 
Not tea bag, right? Maybe it needs a little bit of greasing. I think all in all, that's gonna do it. All right, friends, I'm gonna replace this cotter pin with this very tiny nut and bolt, uh, and then cut off the excess threading because this, the way I rigged this, man, it was the only way, uh, but it's all too close to the tire. If I had the cotter pin in there, it's gonna make contact with the tire at some point. And now it can turn without making contact with the tire. I specifically positioned that block right there. Uh, I mean, it's close, but good enough for me. Now I want to do one more thing before we send this thing out the door. Now this unit had the remote uh, tilt for the chute. I'm going to see if I can put that, that on this one. So we're going to pull this top piece off and see if we can swap over the crafts or the uh, original one. This is the craftsman chute, which is manual. You would just loosen this toggle here and put it where you want it. And there's nothing wrong with that method. It works just fine, but it'll be a good selling point if I can have the uh, original equipment working, you know, that kind of deal. My goodness, some of this hardware is just friggin' on there. And I mean, why? What, what, why does this need to be more secure oh, than the nut holding the rotor on a helicopter? Why, huh? Someone tell me. All right. Now, it looks like this has some kind of pin holding it all in, I think. Oh, that was easy. But so far, so good. All right, I've got this thing at the top of its range. So I guess let me put the controls in the same position. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? All right, friends, the original screw that was in there was like a self tapper, and I think it's, it's just going to get ripped out if I try to use that one. So I found this. Oh, that's way too big. Never mind. Never mind. I'll go back to the drawing board. Well, for better or worse, there's a hole there now. And it's for worse because the hardware I picked out is too short. What is wrong with me today? Amateur hour, I tell you. All right, get your head in the game, bud. All right, friends, let's give this a shot. I guess I'll just throw it across the room first. So far, so good. As previously discussed, we want a nice tight connection because if there's any weeble wobble, that hole is going to wallow out. It's just the way it's gonna go. And we officially have a finished snowblower, I think. Why would I say that before testing? I don't know. No kidding. Well, all right. That is surprising. Eric's gonna be tickled. Hmm, not bad. All right, friends, we're gonna call that shoot sorted. I got two other issues that I need to address. One is the fact that it is very stiff to shift. The other is the fact that these guides are worn through on one side. So let's take care of that stuff. Someone's definitely been in his belly pan before. Maybe it's had new belts put on it. Who knows, that is a 3 8 not a 7 steam. That's what you get, bud. Take our bets. What do you think is gonna be behind door number one? Mouse nest, 
Uh, three shredded belts that they never bothered taking out when they put the new one in. Jimmy Hoffa. Good gravy. All right, didn't mean to do that, but uh, there she blows. I apologize, you guys caught that one right in the teeth. Really does not look that bad in there. Uh, though there was some nestage. There always is. These things, they sit usually out of the way in a quiet corner of the property, all spring, all summer, all fall, untouched, unbothered. Perfect place for uh, Sammy Squirrel, Chucky Chipmunk, Michael Mouse. Let's look up at our uh, transmission up here. <clears throat> now here's your drive tire. And unfortunately, it is beginning to wear out. You can see it's got a couple cracks in it, but uh, it's not so hard that it's stiff, but this would be a good candidate for replacement. I'll have to talk to Eric about that. We'll see if anybody wants to buy it as is. Now, this, the reason we're in here right now is because it was shifting stiff. When you go to move the shifter, it doesn't move easily. I'm actually putting my back into it in a big way right now. And the reason is this hex shaft right here, it's all full of old grease. You see it all the time. They, they get greasy. Yeah, it's totally sticky from old grease. Uh, I'm gonna go move that shifter so you can see what it looks like in here. When, when you're moving the shifter, you're actually moving this whole assembly with this drive tire. So right now we're in sixth, which should be the fastest forward gear. There's the slowest forward gear. And oh, there's reverse. Back to one, back up to six. Oh man. All right, so here's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna put it in reverse. We're going to try to cover this right here, this friction plate. If you can, you, you don't want to get a bunch of crap all over it. So I'm going to put a thing down like that. I'm going to give that hex shaft a couple spritzes of the good stuff. Let it think about its life choices. That sat for a few minutes. We'll spritz her down again. You can actually see the rust was already starting just from about two minutes after the brake clean was on there. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take your time and clean each side of that hex shaft. All right. It's a hex shaft, so there's six. Especially right here at the end, right before it gets into sixth gear. feel pretty decent about that. And what we're gonna do is shift it the other way. Oh, that already shifts so much better. But you can see this last, um, you know, two inches on the end there, we're gonna have to get that now. So I'm gonna do the same thing all over again. All right, now, ideally, you wanna get a nice, thick, multi-purpose grease, something like that, but it needs to be low temp grease. This is a low temp application. I don't have any of that right now. So what we're gonna do, <clears throat> a little bit of silicone. Next best thing. I like silicone because uh, it doesn't get real gummy in the cold weather, which that high temp grease will. And it doesn't collect quite as much dust and dirt as um, just spraying it with like WD-40 would do. Now it's important when you're spraying this stuff that you've got this over your friction wheel because if you cover that in silicone, it's not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna have a transmission full of neutrals. Now, I'm gonna take it and we're just gonna do this. Oh my goodness, that slides so nice. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful. Now, we're gonna do the same thing on these chain drives. And we're gonna take our... Uh... Actually doing a pretty good job of getting some of the old grease off there. That's really what you want to accomplish, because that old grease 
it's lost all of its viscosity. It's just a sticky mess at this point. Honestly, that is good enough. Honestly, that's good enough for government work. I'm gonna spray it down with silicone. Silicone is the same stuff you'd use on a bike chain. It's totally viable here. High temp grease would be better, but I don't have it. It is what it is. And I've been to three stores, I couldn't find anything. It's unfortunately the world we're living in. Can't, can't restock what you used to be able to. Now, sometimes you'll have a situation where this drive wheel is already covered in grease. If you have a transmission full of neutrals and you've checked all your linkages and everything, you may just have to wipe this down. Uh, but that's not our case. This thing is drenched in brake clean though, so I think I'll we'll clean this off anyway. There we go. Alrighty friends, I just realized I forgot to flip these. <clears throat> so they can get their second life, but that's all right. I'll do that before we send her out the door. Let's put our spork plug back in, which we had removed for safety. Come on. Come on here. Something is amiss. There we go. Prime. Got gas, right? Oh, yeah. Fuel for days. Choke. Throttle. I'm going to end up elbowing the Durango behind me. I'll tell you what, that solder is on this one. Hey, quiet down, you. Uh, this thing is a beast, man. She's an animal. Don't judge it on what you saw here. I didn't really have any fresh snar to be uh, cleaning up, so I was kind of just trying to plow ice. Uh, uh, everything works. I feel good about it. If you got any questions, by all means, leave a comment down in the squawk box. Let me know what you think about this one. I expect this is the kind of repair and jerry-rigging and figuring out that a lot of folks have to do. Uh, you get a fancy snar blower or whatever. It's got all types of bougie features. When these features start to go, what are you going to do? Are you going to pay hundreds of dollars to fix them? Are you going to buy a new unit? Or are you going to make it work? So if you like snowblower repair as much as I do, by all means, I suggest you follow the channel. Go check out some of our other videos. We obviously have more videos coming up uh, on that snapper. We still got the Aryans, plenty of stuff. So comment down in the squad box. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. How much would you pay for this white outdoor? It's not my favorite machine, but it's not tea bag either. She's all right. I'll tell you one I'd like. I'd like this in a big storm. I think this would be a good blower for just like straight shot, 24 inches. Let's get her done. What do you think?